on our phone. We're okay. live. Sergeants, if you could begin your recordings. Recording has started. Cloud has started. Backup is rolling. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to today's remote New York City Council vote of the Committee on Finance. At this time, would all panelists please turn on their video and to minimize disruption, please silence your electronic devices. Thank you. We are ready to begin. Okay, thank you very much. Good morning and welcome to today's meeting of the Committee on Finance. I am Council Member Daniel Drum and I'm Chair of the Committee. I need the names of the uh, members who are attending. If somebody could send that to me and I'll read it right after. Today, the committee will be voting on eight items. Proposed intro number 2046A, a pre-considered introduction extending the council's time to respond to the preliminary budget. A pre-considered introduction relating to she and D uh, property tax exemption renewals, an expense budget modification, a revenue budget modification, a transparency resolution, and two Article 11 property tax exemptions. Proposed introduction 2046A, sponsored by Council Member Brad Lander, would clarify and codify the existing requirement and practice of the mayor issuing capital commitment plans and capital project detail reports. The current language of the charter does not clearly delineate the requirements and timelines of the two distinct reports that are produced and this bill would address that lack of clarity. The first pre-considered introduction, which I have sponsored, would extend the date by which the council must submit its response to the mayor's preliminary budget from March 25th to April 1st. Currently, the budget response is due on the same day that the charter sets forth for the end of the preliminary budget hearings. In order to provide the council with sufficient time to prepare its response to the preliminary budget, after the conclusion of the budget hearings, the proposed legislation would extend the due date by one week. The second pre-considered introduction, which I have also sponsored at the request of the mayor's office, would automatically renew for next tax year, all senior citizen homeowner and disabled homeowner property tax exemptions to all properties that receive the benefit this year. The law would allow the Department of Finance to require renewals in four instances where it believes the property may no longer be eligible for the benefit next year. Specifically, if one, the owner has died, two, the owner has sold the property, three, the owner has added a new owner to the deed, or four, the owner no longer uses the property as a primary residence. DOF estimates that this would impact approximately 800 properties out of the 55,000 properties that are receiving the benefit this year. This pre-considered introduction was prompted by the state's recently enacted COVID-19 Emergency Eviction and Foreclosure Prevention Act, and our local law conforms with the authorities that the state law afforded to us. Next, we have the budget modifications. The expense budget modification represents movements of approximately $1.1 billion of funding between and within city agencies to reallocate appropriations in the city's expense budget and has a net impact of $0. The revenue budget modification recognizes $1.9 billion in new revenues in fiscal 2021, which combined with additional resources of 421 million of prior year payables and an adjustment to the general reserve will be used to prepay $2.7 billion, $2 billion of fiscal 2022 expenses. Next, we have the transparency resolution. The transparency resolution sets forth the new designation and changes in the designation of certain organizations receiving local aging, anti-poverty and youth discretionary funding and funding pursuant to certain initiatives in the budget. As with all transparency resolutions, council members will have to sign a disclosure form indicating whether or not a conflict exists with any of the groups on the attached list. If any council member has a potential conflict of interest with any of the organizations listed, he or she has the opportunity to disclose the conflict at the time of their vote. As a reminder, please disclose any conflict you may have with proposed subcontractors used by organizations 
sponsored by discretionary funding. These disclosures must be made before the subcontractor can be approved. Disclosure forms must be completed and submitted prior to the vote on the transparency resolution and may be emailed to Charles Davis. Finally, we have the two land use items. The first is 1045 Anderson Avenue in Council Member Ayala's district. This action was revised the November 2019 resolution passed by the council authorizing a full 40 year property tax exemption to give it retroactive effect to April 2019 in support of the preservation of 22 units of affordable home ownership. The second is 728 Driggs Avenue in Council Member Reynoso's district. The action would provide a full 40 year Article 11 property tax exemption to support the preservation of 30 units of affordable home ownership. Each council member is supportive of the exemptions in their district. Are there any questions on any of the items on the agenda? Okay, and let me just, before we go to the vote, say that we have been joined by council members Koslowitz, Van Bremer, Gibson, Cornegy, Cumbo, Rosenthal, Grogenchik, Amphrey Samuel, Ayala, Moya, Powers, Lewis, Diaz, and Matteo. I believe that's Dharma Diaz. Are there any questions? Okay, seeing none, I am going to ask uh, Billy Martin, the committee clerk, to call the finance committee roll. Good morning, everyone. All items are coupled. Chair Drum. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Van Bramer. Hi, sorry about that. Oh, thank you. Gibson. Good morning, I vote aye. Cornegie. I vote aye. Combo. I vote aye. Rosenthal. I vote aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Ampri Samuel. Good morning. I vote aye. Ayala. I vote aye. Moya. I vote aye. Powers. I vote aye. Lewis. Permission to explain my vote? Permission. Of course. Oh, I'm Thank sorry. You. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both. Um, I vote I on all except pre-considered intro, uh, the one in relation to the property law exemption renewals. There are 25 homeowners in my district that's on that list that would be compromised by this exemption, and I wouldn't have enough time to get in contact with them regarding this vote, so I won't be voting on that, but yes on everything else. Thank you. Thank you. Dharma Diaz. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Matteo. I'm voting no on 2231, no on M288, and I and the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One moment. My, my apologies. Okay, all items on today's committee agenda have been adopted by a vote of 15, the affirmative, zero on the negative and no abstentions with the exception of the following, pre-considered introduction in relation to the property tax is adopted by the committee 13 in the affirmative, two in the negative and no abstentions and pre-considered M in relation to MN-3 is adopted by the committee 14 in the affirmative one of the negative and no abstentions. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Billy. I just wanted to confirm that uh, all members that have had an opportunity to vote, am I correct, Council? Yes, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, we uh, will then adjourn this meeting at 11.30.
uh, 11, 18 a.m. in the morning. Thank you very much, everybody.